One thing that's going to be very different with Grand Theft Auto 6 is a lot of people that have worked on previous GTA titles are missing. They've left the company or no longer with Rockstar Games like Dan Hauser, Leslie Benzies, and even Laszlo Jones. And that last individual, Laszlo Jones, we'll talk about in a little bit because he had a very funny answer to something relating to Vice City uh, over the last couple of days. But I want to actually take you back to 2008 because one person that is still with Rockstar Games and can give us an idea of how things are going to work with the world of Vice City and in the state of Leonida and how the map is going to function is Aaron Garbett. This is Rockstar's art director. He is still there, meaning he's been there since Grand Theft Auto 4, GTA 5, and GTA 6. And I know that the Rockstar games of the past is different than the Rockstar games of today and of the future. But still, we can't really go back and take a look at what Leslie Benzies might have had to say or Dan Hauser because they're simply no longer the company. So their ideas might not stick or might not have stayed. And in this instance, Eurogamer was doing an interview with Aaron Garbett surrounding Grand Theft Auto 4's map. And I actually think we can take a lot of this into Grand Theft Auto 6. So they asked him, given your use in some cases of real world locations, do you find that you have to contrive or excise details to skew the game in a fictional direction? Or does the process of creating locations from visual materials and memory naturally imbue them with your own distinctive aesthetic quality? And he goes on to say, we never reproduce real world locations. We take interesting or representative elements and create something new from them. It's about taking inspiration from real places and producing something that captures the essence of it. We're trying to take our impression of New York and keep it as that, an impression, not a labored reproduction. I think it gives it more flavor, more intensity, and in an odd way makes it feel more real. I've seen it on other games that set to rebuild a city street by street. Not only do compromises get made that favor realism over fun, but a lot of the life is lost and all that's left is a hollow representation of a real place. I'd rather have the right vibe than an accurate roadmap. And so, of course, we saw that in Grand Theft Auto 4 and their version of Liberty City or New York City. We saw that in GTA 5 with their version of Los Santos and the state of San Andreas. And I believe we're going to see the exact same thing with Vice City and the state of Leonida. So even though Vice City, which is, I would say, one of the smallest maps in the GTA series, obviously because of when it came out and the system it came out on, PlayStation 2 and Xbox, Rockstar didn't have a lot of technology and hardware where to work so there aren't honestly that many streets so naturally that version of vice city is certainly not a one-to-one -one representation of miami but don't expect the same thing here in gta 6 it's not going to have every single street that's in Miami. It's not going to be the exact shape of the state of Florida or Leonida. And that's something that fans have been arguing about really since day one. What is the shape of this map going to look like? Is it gonna have a panhandle? Is it going to include the surrounding states that border real life Florida, like Georgia and Alabama, and even to its Northeast, South Carolina to a degree? Or is it going to be on its own island like Grand Theft Auto 4 in GTA 5? making it certainly a little bit less realistic, but maybe more of what Rockstar Games is going for. Now I can tell you that I have both visited New York City and Los Angeles and playing countless of hours of Grand Theft Auto 4 and GTA 5. I do feel like both those games captured every area that needed to be captured for both those cities to feel unique. And not only have I visited Miami in real life, but also plenty of other areas in Florida, whether it be centrally or up north, and I feel like Rockstar will get the area and the vibe of that world perfectly. And at the end of the day, this is basically the design goal of every Rockstar titles. Their games in general show distorted portraits of America at different points in time. And the key is in the consistency and cohesion and virtually every facet, right from the world building, its tone and texture, down to the gameplay and the detail so that they feel authentic and grounded. And realism is entirely besides the point None of their games seemingly are aiming for that. And Aaron Garbett actually doubled down on that in an interview he did in 2013 surrounding the GTA 5 map. This is coming from the website BuzzFeed. They asked him, the GTA games have always been to me at least as much about past cultural representations of a place as about that place itself. 
What are the cultural and imaginative representations of California, whether in movies, fine art, music, street art, etc., that are slash were important to you and your team, and how do those influences express themselves in GTA 5? And Aaron Garbett said, I've always felt we base our games on the way a place lives in your head rather than the real place, the way it feels in your memory after you've left, where it mixes in with art, TV, music, and films you've seen, where it stops being glass and tarmac and instead becomes something more or less tangible but far more visceral, where it's more about the emotions the place stirs in you than the ones that a film or a piece of music could have planted there. I don't think I can narrow that down into specifics. For me, at least, the world we've built is a huge melting pot of ideas, imagery that have come from literally everywhere and anywhere. So expect Rockstar Games to do the exact same thing again with the world of Vice City and the state of Leonida when it comes to GTA 6. Rockstar isn't going to go for realism 100%. Instead, what they want you to do is essentially close your eyes Think of what you would think of South Florida to be like or Miami, and then that's what they're going to you know, try and show you. And I think we saw a lot of that in the first trailer, how not only it was this beautiful, sprawling world with lots going on in terms of people and wildlife, etc., but also the craziness that you see online, whether you turn on the news or whether you see something on social media. I think that's the goal that Rockstar Games was going for here. And so to a degree, do I think it's going to be realistic? Absolutely. But I think it's going to obviously have its own Rockstar Games twist on it. But one thing that I've always been able to do is when you see a place like New York City or Los Angeles on TV, you say, hey, I know where that is because I've played Grand Theft Auto games that take place there. I feel like I can navigate around that city well. And as I mentioned earlier, Laszlo Jones, who is no longer at Rockstar Games, he did a podcast interview with radio personality Dan Sauter, essentially talking about how even though he had never visited Miami before, because he played Vice City, he like knew exactly where he was. Take a listen to this interview clip right here. He asked me how many Grand Theft Autos I shipped, and I said nine. GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, Liberty City Stories, Vice City Stories, Chinatown Wars, Grand Theft Auto 4, The Lost and Damned, Battle of Gay Tony, GTA 5. Yeah, and, and Red Dead Revolver, Red Dead Redemption, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Right, and then there was Bully in there and Midnight Club and... I mean, dude, Warriors. The Warriors was so good. I saw I have it. I have it on my... Uh, by the way, this is the man... You're the reason I have a Steam Deck. I, I got brought mine with me. For GTA 4, I went to Miami to do press. Yeah. Right? And I'd never been, but I worked on Vice I, City, yeah. right? Me and this guy that worked at Rockstar are driving. I, I go... This is starting to feel really familiar. And I go, I bet you if we go around this corner, there's a strip club. Went around the corner, strip club. I was like, yo, I know how to get around town. That's so funny. They're like, have you ever been to Miami? You go, I play it. I made Vice City. <laughs> right. I'm good. So I'll leave a link to the entire podcast in the description. I just thought that was kind of funny and fit with what we were talking about in this video today. So I'd love to hear from you guys in those comments down below. How do you think the GTA 6 map is going to be? Do you think Rockstar is going to balance realism? Do you think it's going to be massive? Do you think it's going to be a one-for-one -one creation? Let me know what you guys think in those comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. You want to stay up to date on all the GTA 6 videos that I'll be doing here on my channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work, and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.